welcome to another episode of Preparing for the Unexpected. I'm your host, Alex Fullick, and as always, we like to talk about things related to disaster recovery, business continuity, resilience, testing, and exercising, anything that helps you, your organization, and your community prepare for, respond to, and overcome adverse situations. If you'd like to be a guest on the show, please feel free. You can find me on LinkedIn. I am the only Alex Fullick there. I'm really easy to find, and I do respond to everything I get. Longtime listeners and viewers, you probably know that I was in, uh, I've had attended quite a few conferences over the last little while and had the pleasure of hearing and seeing some amazing speakers. And today I have one of them here today to talk about their topic, successful drills and exercises. And I'd like to welcome to the show, Dr. Stephen Goldman. Steve, welcome to the show. Thanks, Alex. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm looking forward to hearing what you have to say, because I know uh, you've you've got quite a, let's say, a couple of years experience. <laughs> yeah. You know, we were both chatting about Y2K before we started recording. So I know we have we both have a couple of years experience between the two of us here. <laughs> so uh, now I know a little bit about you. Could you take a minute or two and tell us uh, about yourself, what you do and how you got into what you do? OK, well, um, like everybody, nobody. No one in our profession majored in business continuity with a minor in disaster recovery. We all came from different backgrounds. Are you ready for this? I have two degrees in nuclear engineering from MIT. And I was at a power plant doing startup and operations and you know real stuff. And they said, you know, you can put a subject and a predicate in the right order, even though you're an engineer, come downtown and do our corporate public relations. You'll be the nuclear spokesperson. Like, you're kidding me, right? I want to do steam and power. And they said, no, come on down. So I did. And, and Alex, I loved it. I got to be the nuclear spokesperson. I got to learn how to deal with the media. They they taught me how to write. You know, again, as an engineer, we don't know how to do that. But that led to um, uh, nuclear, emergency, nu uh, nuclear emergency planning, nuclear emergency communications, nuclear emergency planning, which led to corporate emergency planning, which led to where I am today. Um, I, I, I enjoy it. Every day is different. I've been a consultant. I've been a, a global BCP manager for a, a large multinational firm. Um, I've been a responder, a planner, you know, you name it, I've done it all. Now, I also um, teach two or three courses at MIT on crisis planning and crisis management, which we can chat about later. But uh, like you, many years experience, and I've enjoyed it all. Always enjoyed it. Wonderful. I know I've seen you speak at uh, conferences, so I'm glad to finally have you be able to come on the show and talk with me today. So thank you so much for joining. My pleasure. Now, as I mentioned, our topic is going to be about successful drills and exercises. So I'm going to ask you the first question. Why are drills and exercises even important? And is there a difference between the two? Okay, uh, I'll start with your second question first. A drill is usually smaller scale, a team uh, you know, a lecture. It's, you know, you do this stuff, but it's a tabletop exercise. It's not big. To me, an exercise involves multi-teams, multi-response, different areas, different departments, and a large-scale exercise, for example, would involve your entire organization plus other organizations who would respond with you. So that's kind of the difference. It's the difference in scale and responders. Uh, why are these important? Well, Alex, I, I could, I could, let you read how to ride a bicycle or I'll let you read how to program your, your cell phone. Okay. And that's fine, but you're going to forget about it. I can even show you how to ride a bicycle. I can show you how to um, uh, program your cell phone. Yeah. Okay. Fine. But you're going to forget about it until you actually get on that bicycle or program that cell phone and make mistakes. Do you really understand what's going on? And this is what you want. You want people to understand when they get that notice, this is what I do. A lot of muscle memory. Now, the issues are going to be different, but the muscle memory of getting knowing who's going to be at the other end of the phone, that's what's important. And that's why uh, drills and exercises are so critical. You can have a thousand pages of plans, big deal, three o'clock in the morning. If you don't know what to do intrinsically, you're doomed. That's why these are so important. And, and really, who's got time to look at a thousand page plan, even a hundred page plan? You know, it's too much. <laughs> yeah, but exactly. 
you mentioned tabletops and I'm hearing different places and even with clients that I'm dealing with right now, that seems to be the only way of testing. And I know there are benefits to a, a tabletop, but there are other ways of testing, right? Oh yeah. Well, you, you need to do the tabletop. That's to me, that's a step in training, but it, that's not the ultimate. I mean, you, you have to do an exercise of your plan. Um, I'll give you an example. Like if you do a tabletop on uh, ransomware, all right. So part of this should be, I would call in the United States, I would call the FBI. Okay. Check. That's in your procedure. You pass the tabletop. That's good. Do they actually know how to talk to the F who to call, touch with them, and what the FBI is going to do? And that you have to do with an exercise, right? You have to actually make the phone call, get them involved, and see what they do. But with the FBI, it's, it's really more important as what they will not do. They will not tell you whether or not to pay the ransomware. That's your decision. So you have to be prepared for that. Um, one company, I, I, you know, I do consulting on the side. And um, they were saying, well, we'll let the lawyers decide whether we pay ransomware or not. Like, no, because in the lawyer's procedures, it said you have 48 hours to decide on any issue. And like, that's not realistic. Yeah. So in the plan, it looks good. But we actually say, wait a minute, 48 hours. I need to know like now or I need to have you approve this communication now, not in two days. And that's how you test your plans and procedures by making them actually do you know, what the plan says to do. I guess like a, a, a tabletop can be to to some extent kind of a theoretical because you're just verbally talking about it. Yeah, this is what we do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pretending to call the FBI using your example, but in a yeah, real it, exercise, it's, um, you know, uh, I'm, I'm calling the FBI. Is this the right number? You know, and mm -hmm. who, should it be coming from my personal phone or should it be coming from a corporate phone? And you, all of a sudden you start thinking it's these other different pieces that you wouldn't have thought of when you're sitting around the table. That's right. And if you have like, say, person X's number at the FBI and that person's not there, now what do you do? Yeah. And I've, actually, I've involved I've involved the FBI, uh, local uh, police in, in tabletops and full-scale exercises. And the, the information exchange is phenomenal. I've literally run workplace violence drills all, literally all over the world. And with one exception in San Francisco, because the police are actually on a case, police involved, they, they showed up, they wanted to participate. They wanted to see the corporate end or the that end of, of a drill and exercise. And it's always been, always been successful. How do you Never get those to... groups involved? Because a, a lot of, and I know I, I've met people, they don't want the police there. They don't want the file services there in case they find issues. But yeah. that's the point anyway. Yeah. I, so I get, get involved. Exactly. You want to find these things out in a drill. You want to find the right people to deal with the police. I had one drill where um, that was a, it was a ransom. It was a hostage situation. We simulated a hostage situation. I actually had a hostage taker and three hostages. And the uh, police chief asked for the personnel files on the three people who were hostages. And HR said, no, that's private information. And you should have seen the police chief. He grabbed the CEO and said, give me that. Give it to me now. Bang. The CEO said to HR, give it to him. We'll deal with HIPAA stuff later. In a real event, um, you can't do that. And so now this company knows when the police want something, just get it for them. And that in a procedure never would have come out. That's why we do these. That's interesting. That Does, does that mean um, when we do some of these exercises, we should really simulate the uh, uh, bad points too, or the big surprises? Because that that's an interesting point. The chief of police saying, you know, give me the case files on these employees. And yet HR, if it was a real situation, and, and I'm not pointing fingers at HR, so nobody send me yeah. emails. You know, <laughs> becomes a roadblock all of a sudden. Yes. And, well, well, that 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 shouldn't happen. So that, that's, right. that's kind of weird. That's right, exactly. And that's why this drill was so important for everyone to see this. And I, I said to the police, I mean, he, the police chief, I talked to him afterwards, he literally grabbed the CEO and threw him up against the wall when he was done. And I said, uh, is that real? Would you have done that? He goes, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, they need to learn. When I want something, I get it. And he wasn't being egocentric. This was his job. And this yeah. is what he has to do to get it. So never a problem after that. Is that, uh, I couldn't help but think of um, in some of these exercises, um, how should I say this? Sometimes instilling fear 
into people as well because you know you don't want to sugarcoat everything in an exercise you you're not just simulating what's in a documented plan uh you know and making sure that you can it works but also testing how people are going to respond and behave as well yeah exercise i, I joke about this with uh with clients and in, in my, my classes but exercises should hurt you should push things to the limit <laughs> to see how far you have to go uh because you don't want you want to find out in an exercise yes it could be this bad and we better prepare for it or um or if you should like you said sugarcoat it you know what's the point uh because that's not real life and exercises have to be as close to real life as you can make it and that's why they're so important that's why they have to be so well developed realistic with minimum simulation to show people this is what to expect uh we do workplace violence drills and in a couple of cases i've uh, we've tested the first aid response and there's a thing called moulage moulage kits which can dress up your body to look like it's uh, it's actually been injured. I mean, they are so realistic. Mm, you get I sick looking at it. Those, yeah. This is what people are going to uh, see in real life. And so you don't want a first aid responder showing up and getting sick, not being able to do his or her job. So again, this is why you, you get people used to what's going to happen. So are we really trying to test people or the plan? Ah, good question. Um, both. Um, in drills and, and particularly in exercises, you're testing the plans, the procedures, the equipment, facilities. But there's also an aspect of Darwinism. Um, you only want the good people to be in the drill. So if you see someone in a drill or an exercise who just can't perform his or her job, fine. I want to know this now. I have had senior vice presidents literally fail in their position. And the skills it takes to work their way up the corporate ladder are different from those in a crisis. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And we can joke about, you know, what it takes to get uh, work your way up in a corporate ladder. But in a crisis, you've got to have a certain set of skills, a certain mindset, a certain uh, leadership aspect. And I've, I've recommended to, you know, several of my clients, not several, but a few of my clients, that so-and-so should not be head of the crisis management team. Or uh, this other person should not be head of public relations. Or definitely these that person should not be a spokesperson. And that's why you do drills, because you don't want to find out in a real drill or a real event, hey, uh, that spokesperson is not good. Because believe me, you'll have plenty of people telling you that. So drills I, and exercises, uh, Darwinism is, is a big part of that. Yep. I know that would be an amazing thing to come out of a, a, a drill or an exercise and identify the right people. But how do you address the situation when you do, as you say, you know, you have someone who has a high hierarchical title and yet sucks at managing a crisis. <laughs> so how do you go about addressing that? The First of all, the, the let's say the vice president, you know, you have to tell her she's not good at managing a crisis, fantastic at running finance, but not a crisis. And then identifying somebody who is to fill that spot. How do you go about managing that situation if you find it in one of these drills or exercises? Yeah, I've done that. I've done that where I would recommend, say, that the vice president of finance, uh, we need you running the company while the other team deals with the crisis. So you need to do your job managing the company, manage your department during the crisis while you're second lieutenant, your, you know, your backup is actually the person on the crisis management team. So we give them something else to do that is, is well up there. And if your CEO can, you know, put sugarcoat, one of the few times you sugarcoat things, yes, yes, Mary, we need you running a department while someone else is on the crisis management because finance is so important. And you will be kept and notified, kept in charge, but we got to separate the two. And I, I once had to go to a board and say, the CEO is not making it. He's just not making it. Yeah, and that can't be easy. Spokesperson, they go, no, no, you don't want this person <laughs> spokesperson either. You want him, you can, he can be the board representative to the crisis management team, but he's not running it. Okay, great. So there's, there's different things you can do. And what happens when you identify that during the test? Because a lot, as, as you just uh, described, um, talking with the board, that would be yeah. after the uh, test or exercise. 
Yeah. How do you manage it during the exercise? You know? Well, there's a, I'm laughing. I'll, I'll tell you why I'm laughing. There's a couple of ways. One is you just let the person go through and, um, and we learned a lesson and it's a sacrifice of the drill. The other thing is um, in the middle of the drill, you hand a message to the leader and say, you just had a heart attack. Heal <laughs> over and leave and your backup will take care of you. And if it's like, if I want, if I want to test first aid, keel over at your desk and we'll have first aid come in and take you out. If it's just get out of there, I just say, okay, you got a phone call from your spouse, from someone, your child's, you, you get this issue, you got to deal with at home, go have your backup come in and, and we'll do a turnover. And that that's, they've never known, they've, uh, until this broadcast, they've never known that. So uh, <laughs> they thought it was part of the drill. So hopefully so, um, no executive has just heard that there, you know, <laughs> If they're working with you. <laughs> right. <laughs> now they're going to know. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> On that note, we've come to the end of our first segment. We are talking about successful drills and exercises with Dr. Stephen Goldman, and we will be right back. If you like that video, thumbs up. If you didn't like that video, thumbs down. But leave me a message and let me know your thoughts. Of course, don't forget to subscribe. And in the meantime, stay prepared, everybody.